Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Madam Secretary, good to see you. I wanted to get three things covered if I could, but what, first is the, the fire season. We've gotten from the incident uh, predictive services what fire season will look like, uh, significant fire threat above normal for uh, August. And uh, sorry, I don't have a larger uh, chart there, but you can see, uh, you know, obviously my eye goes to, to Washington right away. So mm -hmm. the central part of our state, which is, you know, where we're always concerned, although I'm pretty sure that red area uh, goes all the way over to Spokane. So I'm pretty sure we'll see. So uh, I wanted to ask you about weather predictives because of the 73% of the fires that were started uh, in our state were started from lightning strikes. Mm -hmm. So the weather and weather predictive uh, issues matter. Uh, Senator um, Sullivan and I just introduced a bill to upgrade the NOAA uh, weather forecasting capabilities to give us more accurate data. This is helpful not only in caching services in advance when we know where uh, fires are going to be, but also uh, protection of our firefighting personnel. Uh, we had an incident where probably if we would have been listening to forecasting in Seattle, we wouldn't have sent people out just like my colleague was saying, high winds. But the forecaster that was on the ground in the Okanagan didn't think the winds were going to be that high, and obviously we ended up with fatalities that day. So what will Interior do to work with uh, NOAA to better integrate forecasting capabilities in the operations and management? Thank you very much, Senator. Um, you're absolutely right that better forecasting can help fire managers um, in planning and the firefighting efforts on the ground. Um, we work with NOAA all the time. Uh, we, are, um, we work with our colleagues across the federal government uh, for issues such as this, and I'll make sure that we are reaching out to NOAA specifically on this issue and doing all we can to... Um, if, we, if we need an MOU or something, whatever we call it, within the government, I hope we do that because I think it's, it's important. You. The second map is, is on drought conditions, which... You know, again, you would think rainy Seattle, what are you talking about? Well, the central part of our state there, big agriculture basin. And, you know, I really start worrying about wheat when we look at what's going on in Ukraine and I look at what's happening. The wheat production in Washington and Idaho is quite significant. So um, we are having, we are hearing from our, our wheat growers uh, that, I mean, we're still in drought conditions. And so that's why we have fought for uh, funding and technologies to look at aquifer recharge. So uh, do you believe that getting this program up and running as soon as possible would be helpful in water source substitutions in the West? Thank you so much for the question. First, I, I just want to say that our team, um, Tanya Trujillo, um, our Assistant Secretary for Water and Science, her team is in such close contact with every state and, and folks on the ground with respect to this terrible drought in the West. Uh, they work on that every single day. Um, and certainly Reclamation is currently assessing the elig eligible projects for funding capabilities and needs. Um, so thank you. Uh, every tool in the toolbox is what we need to use with respect to this drought. Senator Heinrich mentioned it's the worst it's been in 1,200 years. Um, so I just want you to know that we're, we're doing everything that we possibly can and appreciate you um, bringing that. Yeah, uh, I think the recharge the idea is a great idea. I just think we got to get, get on it and get on it quickly. The last thing I wanted to, the chairman had a meeting I was unable to attend on uh, Canadian uh, cooperation and issues related to, to mining. Uh, to me, um, showcases how Canada has been successful at hard rock mining because they've had a royalty system. And um, I do want us to work on critical minerals uh, together. These are essential to key technologies from cobalt to lithium to photovoltaic cells to rare earth mineral magnets that are used in wind and electric vehicles. So we need to focus on making sure the U.S. is competitive in critical mineral markets and find innovative ways and environmentally responsible ways to do that, including uh, the recycling of these materials. Um, do you think that this royalty issue should be addressed here? Can you pre please describe how the department can support both critical minerals development on public land while ensuring it's in a, you know appropriate places and what you think about the royalty issue? Uh, thank you, Senator. And um, um, very 
Very proud to lead the United States Geological Survey. There's a team of scientists there that work on this issue every single day. Um, and um, they, are, they, are, they understand uh, the president's um, leadership with respect to critical minerals and our uh, clean energy technology that we're moving toward. Um, also, uh, the interagency work group, they've met recently. It was at their first meeting. Um, working to um, make recommendations to all of us uh, on how we can um, be more efficient. Um, the, the mining law is um, 150 years old, has not had any changes since then, so it's pretty clear that um, we, our country has changed, uh, and so it's, 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 I'm happy that they have a chance to work on that, but we'll take all those recommendations to heart. Did anybody want to make a comment on the royalty issue? Yeah, one of the changes that needs to be made in the mining law is to provide us with a royalty mechanism. Uh, no question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Cassidy. Uh, 